Roast chicken with mashed potatoes, peas, and gravy. It's one of the great meals of all time, and I think I've got it down to a science. I roast my chicken in a slightly unconventional way that, among other benefits, results in especially good gravy. I want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Skillshare is an amazing website where you can find online courses and learn from experts. Real experts, not just guys in their kitchen with a camera. 25,000 classes to choose from for less than 10 a month. And the first 500 of you who sign up using my referral link in the description will get a two-month trial of Skillshare for free. In a 10-inch skillet, I put a little olive oil and then an approximately four-pound chicken. You don't have to do this, but I like scoring the legs, three cuts straight down to the bone. This makes for really thoroughly cooked, fall-apart, crispy drumsticks. Then I grind on a ton of pepper, enough for both the top and the bottom of the chicken. Same with the salt, enough for the whole chicken. Then I smoosh all the oil and the seasoning around the entire chicken right there inside the pan. If I've got it around, I'll stick a piece of lemon, a shallot, and maybe some herbs inside. And look, because I did all that right inside the pan, I only have to wash my hands once in the entire prep of this chicken. Now here's my big trick. Turn the heat on medium under that skillet. While the oven preheats to 400 Fahrenheit, I just cook the bottom of the chicken on the stovetop for like a good 15 minutes. I honestly don't know why everyone doesn't do this. This solves the problem of the white meat always being done before the dark meat is. The dark meat, the thighs, those are on the bottom, getting blasted with heat right now. Also, near the bottom is the super thick part of the breast that's always lagging behind the rest of the white meat when you roast normally. Basically, I leave it on here until it smells like the bottom is about to start burning, then I just throw it in the oven. The convection setting is great for roasting chicken if you have it. Once that's in, I can work on the potatoes. I start with about a pound of red potatoes. The skins taste good and look pretty, so there's no reason to take them off. I just cut them into some smaller pieces that'll boil quicker. Then I do one big russet potato. I like the texture and flavor combination of the two kinds of potatoes together. But russet skins are gross in mashed potatoes. Baked or roasted, those skins are great, but boiled, they have the texture of wet construction paper, so that's why I peel this one. Then I cut it into a little bigger piece than the red potatoes because the russet cooks quicker and I want them to be done at the same time. Fill up the pot with water and while it comes to a boil, I peel and chop a ton of garlic. I've tried all kinds of flavorings inside mashed potatoes. I've found nothing that beats garlic. Chicken's been in for about a half hour at this point, so I'm going to check it. White meat is at 120 Fahrenheit, 40 degrees left to go. At this point, I put some garlic powder on the breast. That tends to burn a bit if I put it on right at the beginning. I also usually up the temperature a bit for this last stretch just to brown the skin. The potatoes are done when you can really easily push a fork through them. I'll go dump those in a colander in the sink. And then in the same pot, I'll melt some butter and then fry the garlic until it just starts to go golden. Then I'll put in maybe half a cup of milk and let that heat up. Potatoes go back in and I'll just cover this up and pull it off the heat for now. After about 45 minutes in the oven, this chicken is done. I like to pull it when the white meat is 160 Fahrenheit. The internal temp will probably rise to 165 as it rests. 165 is what you're supposed to hit for safety reasons. If you need to be extra cautious, maybe cook it a few degrees more than I did here. Look at that even color you get with convection heat. All right, to make gravy, we got to get the chicken out of there. I rest it on a plate rather than a cutting board. You'll see why in a sec. Now check this out. Pre-cooking the bottom of the chicken on the stovetop also gives you this incredible layer of fond with which to make gravy. Also, roasting at such a high temperature means that most of the juice that came out will have evaporated. So there's no need to run this through a gravy separator. That is basically straight fat with which we can make roux to make our gravy. You could use it all, but that would make way more gravy than I usually need for this meal, so I pour off like half of it, and yes, I'm gonna pour straight into my potatoes. It'll taste amazing in there. I'm basically using it in place of some of the butter you'd normally put in, though that's not gonna stop me from also putting in a bunch of butter too. I'll just cover that up and let the butter melt. Now I'm gonna turn the heat on medium under this pan, and when it's sizzling, I'll whisk in just enough flour to make a thick paste, and cook that for a minute until I smell the flour going nutty. Then you could just put in water or cartoned stock, but yeah, I like to start with a little white wine for sweetness. Whisk that in and then whisk in some water too. And the color at first will not be appetizing. Just give it some time. As you simmer this for five or 10 minutes, the little brown bits floating around in there will dissolve and impart their color to the rest of the gravy. 
Here's the shallot from inside the chicken. You could throw that in to flavor the gravy a little bit, or you could cut it up into little bits and throw those in. Here's the lemon from inside the chicken. If you don't like lemony gravy, don't squeeze this in, but sometimes I like it. Here's why I rest the chicken on a plate. A plate is really good at collecting all the juices that will come out of the bird as it rests, and it makes it really easy to pour those back into the gravy where they belong. All right, potatoes. I'll grind in a ton of pepper and some in the gravy while I'm at it, and then start with one big pinch of salt in the potatoes, then mash. I'm conservative with the milk up front so that if the texture is too stiff, I can just add a little more milk at this stage. You can't take it away. Mashers are not good at mixing, so when it's all mashed up, I'll switch to a rubber spatula to get everything evenly integrated, and then I can test for seasoning. Now I'll just cover it and leave it on the warm setting. Gravy is looking perfect at this stage, which means it's actually too thick, because it'll thicken up a lot as it cools. So I'll put in a little more water, and hey, more juice has come out of the chicken. Test for seasoning, that is done. Unless you want to strain it to get the chunks out, I like the chunks. Peas. I do four cups of frozen peas in a microwave-safe jug. If you can get high-quality fresh peas, great, but I usually can't. I just cover those in water and toss them in the microwave for a few minutes. That's just enough time to carve the chicken. First thing I do is tear the leg quarters off with my hands. They are so well cooked with this method that they just pull right off like those grocery store rotisserie chickens. Then I cut the legs off the thighs. Rather than slicing the white meat off the bird, I like to cut each breast off whole. This is easier and you get a cleaner cut if you remove the wishbone before roasting, but honestly that's kind of tricky and these days I don't think it's really worth it. Then I just tear off whatever bits are still clinging to the carcass with my hands. That'll be perfect for chicken pot pie later. Ooh, there's the oyster. Mine. Take the breast, cut off the wing, also mine. Then with the breast off, it's really easy to slice it up however you want it. It also makes it possible to slice against the grain like this, though that doesn't really matter with chicken like it does with steak. When the water in the peas is boiling, you're good to strain them. Then I put in a little butter and some salt and stir it around to let the butter melt. Now, real quick, I'm just going to warm my plates in the residual heat of the oven. Just takes a minute. Those plates will actually reheat this chicken if it's gone cold while we rested and carved it. Plus these sides, that's easily enough chicken for four adults. I think the gravy is mostly for the potatoes, though I do like a little bit on the white meat too. Not that it needs it. Pre-cooking the dark meat lets you cook that breast until it is just done, so it is really juicy. And check out this thigh. It pulls apart like barbecue. This right here is why I think peas are the best vegetable for this. They hitchhike on a forkful of mashed potatoes. Oh, remember those scored legs? Look at all that extra surface area. It's so well browned, it's so well seasoned, it also pulls apart like barbecue because the scoring allowed it to cook faster. I love those. Let's see if I can get one fork with all four elements on it at once. Yes, that sticky mash literally brings the whole dish together. And look how glossy that gravy is. That's from the chicken fat in the roux. It's a bit of work, but that is just a totally killer Sunday supper. Now, you may be thinking, what about that technique where you roast the chicken breast side down for the first half? Won't that achieve the same goal of giving the dark meat the head start that it needs? Well, I finally tried that the other day. I'll show you what happened in a minute. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. If you're like me, you like to learn by doing, you just wanna watch a video of an expert doing it to get you started. Skillshare is perfect for people like us. Perfectly organized, concise courses for every skill imaginable. Skills that can help you advance your career, your creativity, your passions. Tons of cooking classes on there from basic knife skills on up. I've been watching this amazing Indian cooking course by Shafali Ravula. Of all the world's major cuisine categories, Indian food is probably my favorite. I have botched it every time that I've tried it, but she is giving me the confidence to give it another go. Her whole course is packed into just 45 minutes. It's all killer, no filler. It's what I know you demand. You can start learning a new skill with Skillshare today. Only the first 500 of you who sign up using my referral link in the description will get that free two-month trial. If you don't want to remember how to spell my last name, I totally understand. The link is at the top of the description. Now here is what happened when I tried that very popular roasting the chicken breast side down method, as documented on my Instagram stories. Short version, it's a pretty good method, but I think mine is way better. That looks real weird. So, here comes the breast side. Okay. Now I guess I try to brown the top. It's still not great color. Uh, 
and it's done. I cook quite slowly and not like a fast professional chef who's going So I feel very insecure about cooking on camera right now without fast forward. Mm -hmm. I, it all tastes the same in the end. Yes, it does. So, final verdict? I don't know, we haven't eaten it yet. It was kind of harder to make than my method, and the color is definitely not as good. I'll say that it was, it was good, but your chicken is really, really good, and that one was just good, so. Aww. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs>